All right. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our webinar Wednesdays. Uh, today we have BFT. We're going to have uh, Roy Kennedy and Pablo Hernandez. Uh, so in that case, I'm going to go ahead and just hand it right over to Roy, and he's going to kick it off for us. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. So today we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about BFT and uh, a little bit more in depth about some of our access control products, uh, which we offer. So my name is Roy Kennedy, as Jeff said, I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for BFT. A uh, little background on me, I've been with BFT for 12 years, uh, 11 of those in Europe, in the UK, and for the last little over 12 months in the, in the States. I'm joined today by Pablo Hernandez, he's our resident AES uh, technical expert, I would say. Um, our numbers are there and the extensions if you want to feel free to, to uh, call us directly. So a very brief overview uh, on the BFT X6 control will probably be about 40 minutes, maybe a little bit longer in slides and then we'll, we'll do a little Q&A session at the end. But we'll cover the features of the cell prime, uh, qualifying a job site, really important, probably go into depth on that, uh, the programmer and end user apps, uh, the BFT SIM card plan, the Multicom Classic 4G uh, for up to 500 families, video intercom, uh, overview of the apps on again on that connection and wiring, and then like I say, we'll do a question and answer session. So hopefully it'll be uh, it'll answer a lot of your questions during it. But if you do have any questions, I think the best way to do this is probably type them in the, the chat box, and Pablo and I will get to them at the end and try and get them all answered for you. Okay, so the the question is, who is BFT? Uh, BFT Automation is an Italian company design manufacture uh, automation technology that controls the movement of people and vehicles. Globally, we've operated for just a little over 40 years. And since 2004, we've been part of the Sonfi group of companies, a uh, very, very large company specializing in uh, home automation. Little known fact, BFT is actually the fourth largest gate automation manufacturer in the world. Uh, we're headquartered in northeastern Italy in a place called Schio, it's right in the foothills of the Alps, very really lovely place to visit. Um, founded in 1977, and we've been present in the USA uh, through distribution uh, since 1990. So to give you a little idea of where we're positioned globally, these are our main distribution or, or subsidiaries, and then from these we have the lots of distributors uh, which, which promote the product as well. In fact, over 530 uh, headquarters, like I say, out of Italy and worldwide, we have somewhere uh, approaching about 550 employees. Today, we're talking to you from our headquarters in the US, which is based in Boynton Beach in Florida. Uh, it's a brand new purpose-built facility. We've been here a little over 12 months. And um, you know we have some excellent training facilities, which you can see there in the center image, lots of warehouse, lots of storage. Um, so we, we're ordinarily, um, it's very easy for us to turn a product to an order round very quickly for you guys. Uh, so why BFT? Um, BFT, aside from access to offer, offer swing gate operators, slide gate operators, barriers, uh, barrier arms from 10 feet to 26 feet, um, automatic, preventative, and anti-terrorism rated bollards, cellular systems, which we'll talk about today, um, say the video intercoms, which we'll also talk about today. More recently, we've moved into pedestrian speed gates and turnstiles. Um, we have technical support for the product based in Florida, uh, here at Boynton Beach in New York, and across the, the water in Ain Island too. We also added an additional tech support representative in the office here in Florida in March 2020. Um, so I'm going to hand over to my colleague Pablo. He's going to cover the first section, which we will uh, do on the cellular access control. How's it going, gentlemen? Lady, thank you for joining us. Um, just a brief overview, more or less, what um, what you know what the cell prime is, and more or less what it's used for. Um, you know, it's it's a great thing for small business or residential. You can call out to about four numbers in a rolling sequence. Um, you could actually do that in two ways. You can either do it in regular four, or you can have a like uh, out of office or a like second round of employees to call afterwards. So let's say at five o'clock, you turn on do not disturb. 
it'll call another four numbers uh, in sequence for like another shift, let's say. Um, it's also great, you know, great for single family, small homes. It has a 24 seven time clock, which again is great for your home uh, or, or, you know, or small business where you don't want your gate open all day or all night, excuse me. And you could have the gate open from like eight to five, uh, you know, close for lunch and different like that. So you could have up to about 20 different time, uh, timed events. <clears throat> um, you have, you can have program your keypad. That's a new addition to the prime is basically you can, to your keypad, you're able to add 200 permanent codes, uh, 20 time codes and 30 10 codes. Uh, basically the difference between that is 200 codes are basically, you know, those are the permanent ones that you can use uh, forever, all year long, and they always work. Or let's say you have a pool guy or the UPS guy that you want to come in to a certain time, uh, you can make sure that they can only come in Wednesday between five and eight. So their code will only work that day between that time uh, to let them in. And of course, the last one is the 3010 code. And what that is, you know, let's say you have a party uh, on the weekend and you're just going to give out codes to everybody for the weekend and it'll last for about five or six hours. And then that code gets deleted in the system and you don't have to worry about going back in there to take it out. Um, of course, we also have the activity log. Uh, it's the last 20 transactions to let you know um, what happened or what, uh, you know, who's been in and out. Uh, it will let you know, you know, the who put in a pin code. It'll let you know who called it with the caller ID function, which I'll go into a little bit later. And it'll also let you know when the home user picks up the phone, which of the four users actually let the person in. Um, you can have 100 known users, which is actually the caller ID function I was speaking about. So you can program a customer's phone or your, you know, your whoever's at home, their phone into the unit. So when they call the unit, it recognizes the number and of course lets them in for quick and easy access. Um, you can also set up notification numbers to, to the admin. So you're the head of household or you're the manager on duty for that night. Uh, basically, you can get a notification anytime the gate was open. Um, and of course, you can set up the do not disturb function to switch. Uh, to the next set of people again afterwards. Um, there is two free apps that you can use with it. There's an end user app, and of course there's a programmer app. Uh, there's a lot of little features this unit has that it's, it's very hard to just memorize all the different code sequence to type in. So we try to make it easy for you and basically use, you know, have two different apps that are user friendly. Um, we do provide a VFT SIM card plan that we've tested here ourselves. Um, we've made sure that this line works. We make sure that it gets activated correctly uh, with unlimited text, voice, and at least 500 megabytes of data. Uh, and the data, of course, is because we need to have VOLTE active on the line uh, to be able to use, you know, VOLTE calling. Uh, you want to be able to have that clear calling. And of course, with the world changing, you are seeing um, 2G and 3G is basically disappearing. And another thing that's constantly happening is as a unit gets taken down, let's say you have a 3G tower, and th this is exactly what at and is doing, and I'm pretty sure the other uh, companies are gonna follow suit. And basically what that is, is a 3G tower goes down or any 3G product goes down, they don't fix it. They replace it with the new product, with the new 4G LTE or the new 5G antenna tower. Uh, so very important to have the line set up correctly so when 2G or 3G does get cut off in the area, you are using uh, 4G network, 4G LTE active. And that's another good thing about using us, you know, it's a, you can even charge your customers extra on top of it and have like a reoccurring revenue and things like that. But I could actually let you and Roy discuss that a little better. Um, yeah. Of course, can be used in conjunction with the seller intercoms. Uh, T-Mobile will not work on 4G networks. Uh, there is a fix coming for that soon, but I can't tell you how soon. We have been working on it uh, for necessarily a different model just to make sure we can incorporate more brands. But for right now, we recommend just sticking with the AT&T uh, for our SIM card that we that provide that use AT&T networks. Um, also, we want to go into the to site pre-qualifications. Right? Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of Open Signal. Uh, it is an application that you can download on your phone, or if you don't have an application, you could also use um, sorry, you could also use um, your laptop and go to the website here. Uh, and what that does is let you know what kind of towers are in the area, um, what kind of network coverage you have, how strong the network coverage is. You know, because it's always good to do your survey before you sell the customer a product, and you don't want to go back 20 times. You want to make sure everything's set up for success, uh, so when you get there, you're in and out. Okay, um, with addition, I'm not sure if you guys have seen the different types. We have our regular pedestal, good old American pedestal mount, and of course we have the 
um, the Euro model. Uh, the Euro model is, of course, more aesthetically pleasing. So a lot of people wanted to be able to put it on pedestals as well. So we also came out with a new pedestal that you are able to mount uh, that Euro model with the blue back. Uh, you know, sometimes you have a, you know, you have a barn entrance that you're trying to do. And sometimes you have a really nice, you know, $4 million mansion that you have an entrance to. So it all depends. Uh, we're trying to give you more of a range to do whatever it is you need. Of course, we can get you guys pricing on that after this. Um, and this one is your Cell Prime 4G programmer app. So any installer can have this. And honestly, you can give this to a homeowner that you think is tech savvy, but don't give this to any homeowner because they're gonna go in there and change everything and screw it up. But for the most part, this is this app, the programmer app is allowed to, to basically anything that the Cell Prime can do, this app can program and tweak it for you. Um, if you notice, you have all different set downs. And of course, one of my favorites is the client list. Uh, so let's say you've installed 20, 30, 40 of these Cellbox Primes in different sites. You can always go back to your client list and, you know, just on the go, be able to remotely change whatever it is they need. You know, they send you a text, hey, listen, uh, you know, one of my employees is fired. Can you take them out of caller ID? You can quickly, you know, pull up that client's phone number, uh, make the changes they need, and you'll have anything you need. There. Of course, you know, you can change your dial time, service calls, any type of information. Um, it, it's all available to you here. And of course, uh, if you'd like to download the app to play with it, the QR code is on the screen now. I'll wait a couple seconds for you guys to be able to snap that picture if you'd like, or just look up the name and download it from your App Store or Play Store. Uh, it is, as of right now, only on Android and iPhone. Uh, it is, or Android and Mac. It is not on Windows or any other type of platform. Uh, so right now, it is strictly Android and iPhone only, or iPad. <clears throat> of course, this is the end user app. This one's a little bit more user friendly. Uh, not able to do as much as the programmer app, but the customer can still do, get a lot done, uh, at least anything they would need to get done. Um, you know, you're, you have for an output one and an output two, of course, that's because you have two relays on the board. Uh, so you'll be able to switch. Let's say you have a pedestrian gate or, you know, your regular car entrance gate and right next to you have a pedestrian gate. You'd be able to switch on the fly between which relay you're trying to talk. <clears throat> and if you look right up here, this is the way this function works is this is your, you would have to have your unit program, your phone number programmed in the unit. So when you tap this button, it'll call the unit and recognize you. So every time you just open the app real quick, tap this button, it'll call the unit. As long as you're programmed in caller ID, it will open. Uh, again, very important to be programmed into caller ID to use this. Um, and then of course they give you two, these two bottom buttons right here. This is your hold open or your latch command. This will make your relay latch and stay open to hold the gate open and not let the close timer count down. And of course, you have your unhold or unlatch command. So you click this, the relay will unlatch. And of course, however long your gate timer is set up to count down for, that's how long it'll take before it starts to close. Um, also, there's an option. Uh, there's a lot of people that we sell to that have multiple entrances. So right down here, you're able to switch between two different intercoms. Uh, you know, intercom one in the front entrance, intercom two in the back entrance. And of course, this all still applies to both entrances. Um, on the bottom here, you'll be able to see your home screen. This is where you would program any keypad codes. And of course, this is the same thing as far as permanent codes, temporary codes, and um, time codes. Um, this is your notification screen. This is where you would go to input the number that you want to get the notification every time the gate opens. And also the message you would like for it to say every time you get the text. Um, you have your timing functions. This, of course, is for your 24-7 timer, uh, where you can set up different time, you know, uh, 20, uh, 20, 20 times to be able to, uh, you know, have different things like Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, Saturday and Sunday, 7 to 12, you know, different hours to be able to you know, have your gate working or whatever you need. Um, and that more or less is the home screen of this app. Um, quick install guide. This is something will also be available to you through QR code shortly. Um, and of course, this is something that I recommended earlier. You know, this product comes with a SIM card, which run on our AT&T lines that we've checked and we've already installed their APN into the unit, so they should boot up right away. Uh, you know, you can use AT&T, but again, we recommend this because we have them pre-programmed with our APN, so it boots up right away for areas that don't have 3G. Um, of course, earthing. Everybody, I'm going to say that again, maybe three or four more times. Earthing, earthing, grounding, grounding. This, I can't stress enough. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain it any better, but people need to use a grounding rod. They need to connect it to the search tube. It's for your benefit. It's for your customer's benefit. 
and it's also more cost effective. Um, definitely in the states mentioned below, if you do not have it grounded, your warranty will be voided. So please ground your units. You know, we want to help you. We want your customer to be happy. Um, it's very important. There's a new board that we added that I'll go to in a little bit depth further, but that board, you know, only works as good as your install. So um, very important, you know, make sure you're hooked up to a 110 <clears throat> surge protected line. And again, you do not want to go over 30 feet at 16 gauge. Okay, you know, and if you can get 14 gauge in there, throw 14 in there as well. But again, 30 feet is your absolute max uh, to go from your power supply to the cell box. Uh, you don't want to run into any issues. And of course, your grounding rod. Um, here's a little example of how to hook up. Like I said, the Prime has Relay 1 and Relay 2 to be able to connect. Here's your gate. And then here would be like a maglock or a strike for your pedestrian gate here at the house. All right, inserting the SIM. We do have a little picture on there to show you how to insert it, but just in case you're watching this video, this is the way to insert the SIM with the little slot to the bottom left. All right, and here is a picture of the surge board that we have added. <clears throat> About a year ago, I would say we've added this board to our Wi-Fi units and our cell prime units and our switches, basically anything that's uh, intercom related, we have thrown this board in there. Why is that? This board basically does, has two functions. Uh, for the most part, it saves you, um, you know, for the most part, it saves you from any type of major surge, <clears throat> any type of lightning storms, because this guy right here is what's going to take the hit. You know what I mean? So if anything happens, you, this guy is what you want to go down and not your motherboard, not your keypad, because those parts, of course, you know, if it comes in fried smelling like smoke, nine out of 10 is not going to be covered in the warranty. So I think I'd prefer this board to take your hit. Uh, and it's actually a very easily changeable board. Uh, low cost, and of course, you also have three capacitors here on top. What are those capacitors doing? Uh, for the most part, what they're doing, they're acting like a little battery. They're storing a charge. So let's say they get the phone call. The unit's been standing by for a while. Uh, it's not active, and then you get the phone call, or you get a pin code, and you get the relay to activate, or you, you know, the, the modem has to turn on to make the call. It's doing an amp draw, like a, a quick amp draw from it, and having these capacitors on top give you that little boost it needs for the unit to run smoothly. Uh, so we've seen a great increase in how the unit's overall performance, uh, how they run, how they act. Um, and on top of that, like I said, there's nothing you can do. We live in the States. You're going to get lightning. You're going to get anything that just is going to blow your board up. So I, this is made to take your hit to not mess up your intercom. Um, there's also uh, for any old to new primes because we're in a weird spot right now where we're transitioning from old 3G to new 4G prime boards and of course they came with two different keypads. Both keypads do work in each unit. The only thing is the older units came with their baud rate at 1100 right or 11520 I forgot the exact number and the newer units came with the baud rate at 9600. So let's say you have an old unit, you get a new motherboard in because, you know, it's fried or whatever reason. You put the new motherboard in, oh, hey guys, it works, but now my keypad doesn't work. And it's not that the keypad doesn't work, it's just that the keypad is set to a different baud rate. So there's two different ways to do that. One way, of course, is as you see here, when you get a new keypad, you're able to either leave the jumper on or remove the jumper to make it the baud rate that the board is asking for. Or of course, there is a text uh, that you can send the unit to change the bond rate that it's running at. So then you reset it and get it going. Um, this is when you're, you would send it a star 20 pound, depending on your answer, this is how you know if you have the old bond rate or the new bond rate, right? If you see the one here, you want to run on the 115200. If you see the nine here, you want to run on the 9600 bond rate. So basically if you're here, you can leave the jumper on and it's fine. If you're anything here or before, you'd want to take the jumper off on your keypad when you're replacing. So very important to remember this, guys. Right? And let's say for whatever reason you lost the keypad, I, you know, I don't think I have the text on this slide, but I will get it to you guys, the text string that you would send to be able to change the baud rate. Um, but yeah, just so you guys are aware, that is a possibility, either the jumper or a text. Um, here you have four LEDs on this unit, so you know what they mean. Um, basically, right here, you have, whenever you see a flashing green, that means your, your CPU is up and running and it is just in standby, no problems. If you get solid, it is busy. It's actually doing something. It's processing something. 
Same, this blue light is your signal light. However many times that it flashes, it's just telling you how much signal strength you have. And it goes from one bar to four bars. Um, if for whatever reason you're flashing 10 times or it's more than four, because sometimes it's hard to count, but you're sure it's more than four flashes is because there's no signal or it's not able to connect or your SIM card's bad or your SIM card's out of minutes. Just something with your connection is not working. So very important. If you're getting more than four flashes, something's wrong with your network or there's no signal or something's going on. Uh, you got your power light, which is red. That should always be on when you first turn it on. And then, of course, you have your modem light. Uh, your modem light, if it doesn't turn on, this is important. If this does not turn on, you have a problem. So right away, this modem light should turn on and eventually start flashing to let you know that it found signal. <clears throat> we have uh, a couple quick guides here. Uh, you, this is, you can scan this down here at the bottom so you can, you can get a little PDF copy on your phone and have it handy all the time. Uh, and this will give you basic programming. Uh, let's say you decide to not go with our AT&T uh, provided SIM card. Uh, this is how you would input your APN of whatever network you're deciding to use. And again, remember to stick with, try to you know, stay with AT&T or our AT&T provided SIM. <clears throat> we do pre-text um, these units, our APNs, um, so when they get out to the site and you throw our SIM card in, they boot up right away. Because let's say you don't want to use our SIM and you're at a site that does not have 3G and you're putting in another SIM card that does not have our APN, they, a lot of times it will not allow it to get on the network and you will not be able to text it the APN you want so it works right. Uh, so another reason why we push for you guys to use our network uh, just to takes a lot of the, the problems out of the way, a lot of the steps out of the way, just to boot up and go. I think if I, if I could just add to that, what we have is a, 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 a awful lot of misinformation and misunderstanding from the cellular Correct. Uh, companies providing SIM cards, which really was beyond the, you know the average guy on the street. So we decided that you know moving forward, we would supply with our SIM card, and, and everything's done. So. Prior to that, it was you know carnage constantly with people misunderstanding, and, and often it was misinformation given by the cellular companies. Right. Sorry, Pablo. No, no problem. On. Thank you. Thank you for throwing that in there. Um, then, of course, you know it just shows you how to program a quick keypad code, and you know to set out your dial-out phone numbers. All right. Remember, just because you program the dial-out number does not mean your number has been programmed into caller ID. Now, I know you, you've heard me mention that term a couple times already, caller ID. I get a lot of calls of people saying, man, I, I already programmed the numbers in, but when I call it, it doesn't work. And it's because all they did was program the dial-out number. So all you did is program the number that's gonna be called when you push the button outside. So you also have to program them into caller ID. So when they call the unit or they push that top button in the app, it calls the unit and the unit recognizes them and will let them in. Uh, you can do any any command that you're giving, you can do up to four things at a time. So you notice you can put up to four numbers at a time, or let's say, <clears throat> for instance, I want to do uh, one call out number. I also want to do one uh, caller ID, and I also want to change the time code. I'd be able to do all that because it's up to four different commands I'm giving at once. So just, you know, time consuming or, you know, and like I said, if you have the app, it doesn't even matter. You can just one at a time, push the buttons and make a text for you. Uh, it was just a little quick information. If you ever wanted to, you can do up to four at a time. Uh, again, the search board, I'll go over it a little bit more because I think it's very important and I think it's been a great addition uh, to the cell box units and the Wi-Fi units. Um, the search boards, they will be in every product, as I mentioned. <clears throat> Saves installers money and not only money, time, so they don't have to go back so many times. Um, because for the most part, like I said before, um, this guy is what's going to take the hit. And a lot of times what I see right there is these resistors are what took, they got fried. And they don't get fried from 24 volts. They get fried from a really massive surge that came through. They would have taken out your entire unit. Or static. Or, or static. Or static from units, you know, people just working on the units and touching. Um, uh, we've also added a layer of capacitors, as I mentioned, to add kind of like a, sort of like some batteries, I guess is the best way that I can say it, to, to give you that, you know, you know, actually, the best way that I can explain it, if you're watching this video, back in the day, you probably had a set of 12s uh, in the back of your trunk with an amplifier. You guys ever remember when that amp would hit or you get that nice little bass that would hit, your headlights would like dim? Well, 
I don't know if you guys knew about this, but there was one big capacitor that you can buy that would install right next to your amp. So every time the bass hit, it would take that initial amp draw from the capacitor that was next to the amp. And that would take away all of that, you know, your lights dimming as the bass hits. So we have a, a, a metric button of resistors for your surge. And then we have your little caps here for any type of amp draw the unit needs, uh, setting a relay, two relays at a time, making a phone call, things like that. I hope that was able to make it clear. Um, it is Cat5 friendly. Um, don't recommend it, uh, but we just, a lot of installers end up using whatever's out there. Um, and if you are using Cat5, I'd honestly go shorter than uh, 30 feet. And I try to put as many, you know, double up as many colors as you can uh, to get it across there. But of course, if, if you know, I, I get it. Sometimes you're stuck, that's all you got. Um, you know, just try to stay within the parameters to give yourself a, a successful install. Um, of course, we have a couple of additions, uh, you know, like uh, if you have any type of bad uh, signal in areas, things like that, we have a powered and non-powered versions uh, that you can put on there, you know, based on the needs that you have. Uh, let's say you have a solar install and you don't have no power, you can have the Yagi antenna. <clears throat> and this basically mounts just like you see it, it points sideways, not up and down, it points sideways. And this guy has to be pointing at wherever the tower is. And of course, you would use the open signal app that I mentioned earlier to tell you where the closest tower is. And then of course you would point it in that direction. And don't, you know, try to mount this a little higher. You wanna get a pole out there or something to mount a little higher and point in the right direction. And then of course, this one's my favorite. If you do have power in that area that you can use, this is the signal 4G amplifier. This guy, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Most places have above 20 already, but let's say you have a problem site, this guy will definitely get you to 31. Um, this is a look at the inside of the layout of the board. Back here is the Big Daddy Surge 2. Um, he's mounted in the back, out of the way. Uh, all of your connections here on the side. This is your keypad, the board on the bottom, and this board on top is like a prox add-on uh, for the prox cards. If you do get the prox card version, it would be a little opening down here on the bottom. And with the way that things are going in pandemic, nobody wants to touch nothing. You don't want 50 people touching the button. So everybody has a little prop card, uh, prox card, they come up, they wave it, and basically they don't, nobody has to worry about touching anything. When the world's changing, we gotta change with it. Uh, more or less, this is the lock. Uh, here is your push button in the middle. Um, and then this is your cellular PCB, one of the guys you're trying to save by using the search tube. Um, and of course, your either 3G or 4G antenna, depending on which unit you have, because I know I have some of the people that have already installed these are gonna watch this video. Uh, some new additions also that people don't know about uh, is we have the dual height units. I don't know if you guys have seen those, uh, you know, places that have semis that come through and normal traffic. Uh, basically, uh, this is, you don't need to have two different SIM cards here. You know, you have one brain that runs both of these. These guys will be just like shells with, uh, uh, with just, you know, a wire going to the keypad and a wire going to the button to the brain. And you only use one line for this. And you touch the top or the bottom, they act, they mimic each other. It's like two twins hooked up to one brain, a Siamese twins. Uh, of course, you can also, um, let's say you have a pedestrian hookup or you just have a regular key, you know, the, the intercom on the outside and a keypad for people to get in and out. You can install um, extra uh, keypads to it, extra slave keypads. And if I'm not mistaken, it's up to uh, like five or seven extra that you can put in there. Five, five. Uh, they do all come with their own power supply if needed, um, but a lot of times if you just have one and it's not too far away, I think if it's under 20 feet or 40 feet, you can use the, just the existing power supply from the intercom, but still, if it comes with the power supply and you can hook it up, I would. More reliability. Um, and that's why I mentioned that here, because let's say it says, oops, my apologies, secondary keypads, which is this is what they're talking about right here, max 300 feet. If you're doing 300 feet, yes, you need the power supply that comes with this. All right, so if you're trying to get another keypad hooked up to this and it's 300 feet away, you need to add the power supply to thing of the unit. If not, you know, 40 feet away, 20 feet away, you don't need to use the power supply. You can use uh, just basically the, the cell prime. Uh, same thing here, you, you could, let's say you don't want to have a slave keypad, we have slave prox cards. So you can have a little prox card on the bottom that comes with it and then you can just have a box here that has a prox card little emblem uh, instead of a keypad. <clears throat> okay, this is another, this is like his bigger brother, uh, for the most part, same technology, um, you know, same, 
same modem and things like that. And it also, here's the bright part where the SIM card starts actually looking a little bit more uh, appealing. And I say that because this is a this is a 500 family unit, and it still includes the BFT SIM card that's only 1995. Remember, it's unlimited text, unlimited calling. There's no need to add anything else to it. So let's say you have a complex that has 100, 200 people, you're still only paying $20 a month for the line. Um, it'll call up to three numbers per unit. So you have 500 families, and each family can have up to three numbers being called to be let in. And of course, those three numbers that are being let in are also going to have the caller ID function. So if you're one of the three numbers that are programmed to the house, you will be uh, automatically, if you call the unit, it'll let you in. You don't have to touch a button uh, or scan a proxy card. Um, you have a free app. There is a, a, a programming app, just like the, the app that I spoke of before is for the subprime. There is also a programmer app um, for the multicom. And of course, you have the um, uh, computer software, computer-based software that you can hook up and make all your changes instead of having to text everything. And of course, you can program it uh, live, you know, with the buttons that you have here. Um, you have little prox card keychain hookups, or you can have, you know, the regular old school prox cards. They, are, they, they all work the same. Um, we are actually also working on, it's been delayed with, with all that's going on this year, but we are actually working on a uh, cloud-based option right. to be able to, to program it too. Correct. And it's going to work with this software. So once you, once the cloud base will be available, it'll be working. It'll be very similar to the software, if not going through your software to use it. Uh, but yes, it's gonna it's gonna go to cloud base soon, which makes life a lot easier for everybody. Um, you know, free all the multicoms now are coming with the prox cards. Uh, that's just it's not a it's not a, an add on or an extra. It just comes with it now. So when you get a multicom light, you get the 500 family, and of course a prox card add on. Uh, also, the 24/7 timer carries over to Big Brother. And the transaction log has grown from 20 to 50. All right, so you get the last 50 transactions. Uh, more or less, um, this is something that also, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, got pushed back. But it should be available very soon. Uh, correct. I'm, I'm going to say realistically, it's going to be the start of 2021. Okay. Uh, it may be before, guys. But rather than uh, over promise and under deliver I'll, I'll try and do the other way around yeah no problem well i'll still talk about it a little bit so you guys know what it is and what's going on uh for the most part this is the cell prime uh no it's not video uh the only thing is is that we added a little camera so it snaps a shot of you right when you push the button and sends an mms to your phone uh basically it's, it's actually pretty quick i've seen the prototype you push the button you you know before you even start getting the call you see the, the text message pop up on your phone and it's just a snapshot of who's calling you uh, so it's exactly the same thing as the Prime, everything we went over, just you get a picture right before you get the call. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, and like, you know, like Roy said, hopefully the beginning of next year that should be available. I think um, it's not, you know, linked to an app or, or anything like that. It's on tried and tested Correct. Uh, MMS picture messages. Yeah, it's like, just like a text. It's yeah. not working off an app. It's literally yeah. just sending you a text. So that's, that's a lot so, nicer than working. Yeah, trying so, to get notifications through an application. Yeah, an established infrastructure. So a bit more reliable, I, I feel, than a, an app. And, no, no updates, et cetera, et cetera. So. Right. Yep. All right. Um, we're going to jump into the video access unless you, do we do the um, questions for this I, now? I think, or? I think we okay. should, yeah. I think we should. Uh, if anyone's got any uh, questions that they, oh, sorry, I picked one. Any questions that they, uh, they want to share? I'm just going to check the answers, what questions and answers. So I've got nothing open at the moment. So on that basis, we'll uh, we'll jump through to video access control and maybe take some yeah. some more at the end as well. The no problem. Okay, everyone. On top of the cell box prime and, and cellular units, we also have a uh, internet-based unit. All right. So we also have something that's internet based for your needs. And of course, since it's internet based, we also have video incorporated with it. And this is uh, able to be used through Wi-Fi or LAN cable. Um, we also have an addition that I'll talk about a little later that you can actually make it cellular. We have a, a cellular hotspot modem that we can sell with it, like a pair, like a kit, uh, which I recommend, honestly, because uh, everybody's home network is different. It's clustered. It has different settings, different firewalls, and it's nice to just bypass all of that and have its own dedicated internet, uh, you know, cell phone line 
uh, that we also do provide uh, the SIM card and it'll be a data only line, like a tablet line uh, provided to this modem. And then basically the unit has its own um, internet. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to worry about what it's at. And of course you run a LAN label, a LAN uh, line from this 4G modem over to the unit. Um, you can speak to and see whichever customers are coming uh, of course, you don't have to wait for them to call you. You can open the video at any moment and, you know, take a look at what's going on in your front gate, check the weather out, see what's going on. Um, it'll work on your smartphone or tablet, Android or iPhone still. Uh, as far as I know, no Chromebooks, none of that. It's still only Android or iPhone based. Um, uh, it's easy wireless connectivity or Ethernet. You know, it's not bad, no monthly charges. Um, you know, that's always why a lot of people jump towards this side. But of course, like I said, there is a 4G add-on. Um, it'll call up to five devices at the same time. Uh, so the way that works is it, it sends out like a blast notification to everybody who's considered a user on this thing. So you have the admin and another four or five users. Um, and it'll call and basically whoever has the best internet connection, whoever has the best connection at the moment, will get the call faster, but everybody does get blasted the same call at the same time. And it, and it will let you know when somebody has picked up the call already. Uh, so you don't also try to jump in there. Um, you get up between the keypad and the, the motherboard, you get a total of five relays. Uh, you have three on the keypad, which is programmed locally. And then you have two on the Wi-Fi unit, which is controlled through the app. Um, it does come with a 24 volt one amp power supply. Um, of course, same, uh, same concept, no more than 30 feet, you know, 16, 14 gauge cable. Um, the keypad does have the option of programming up to 1,200 codes. And uh, one of the new uh, add-ons that we've done to the Wi-Fi, because of course this is the Wi-Fi 2, uh, is a night vision uh, IR cut filter. Uh, back then it was always IR, and now it is, you get true color during the day. And then of course at night you get the, the little click, you know, whenever it notices a shade or something, you hear a click on the intercom, and that's the little filter coming on and off uh, on the camera. And that's just, you know, if you ever notice you're, you're installing one, you have the door open, you're standing over it, and you're like, man, why does this thing keep clicking? That's your shadow clicking on and off the IR camera. Um, and that's just, you know, like I said, so at night you're able to see and during the day you're able to see true color. Um, it's also available just like the Prime in your pedestal, flush, or surface mount. Um, you can have pedestal uh, surface mount or flush mount, I'm sorry, and you can have Euro flush mount. Or you can just have the regular pedestal and the regular Euro that has the blue lights in the background. So there's like four different options available for this thing. Um, whatever you need, we get it for you. Um, and of course, we also, uh, if you're interested, we can incorporate a Touch 2 tablet. Uh, and it's a tablet that's already preloaded with our software. So all you got to do is open it up, mount it, and then, of course, add it as a user. Um, well, let's add a couple photos of installs uh, that we've gotten from happy customers. Uh, more of this, of course, is our pedestal mount. Uh, and here's a look at two different types of surface mounts, uh, two different types of surface mount. Uh, both of these will light up blue at night. Um, you know, it has a different look, you know, more aesthetically pleasing for the most part. This is more or less what the app looks like when you're, uh, you know, when you're, when you're in, in a viewing mode. Um, you open the app up, you see the picture of your gate. Of course, it would probably be mounted next to the gate pointing at a car, but you get the concept. Uh, whenever you're in the middle of the conversation, you can click the delay button <clears throat> and it'll extend your call. You can do video. What this video is, is to record while you're having a conversation and you want to see what's going on, you tap this, it'll start recording for you. And this one right here, you can snap a shot of whoever you're talking about. Uh, and of course, it'll save it in your phone's app memory. Uh, you have two controllable relays, which have also one of the new things that have been added to the two is to be able to hold the gate open. So you push, you do a normal tap to open the gate and let it close itself later, or you can push and hold the button and it'll, it'll highlight green. And that's how you know you're holding the gate open and latching that relay. And of course you can end the call at any moment. Uh, there's a new addition as well. Uh, you know, as I stated earlier that you can do blast, uh, the blast call where it calls all five at once. They've added something called sequential calling like the Prime where you can have it call the first user first and the second and the third and the fourth and so forth. Uh, so that is a new addition to the app, whoever, if you have it already, uh, you never saw it before, make sure you got the latest update uh, on your app and then you should be able to find it in the settings. 
Uh, we've updated the camera as I sp as I stated before. Um, it's it's a, a lot nicer looking camera, of course, with the IR cup filter for night vision. Uh, full duplex piece. That's another one too. Back then, the other Wi-Fi was um, you push. Um, you kind of had to use it like a walkie-talkie. Push and hold the button for the conversation. Let go to listen. Uh, we've changed that now, where you can actually have it like a regular cell phone conversation, which is called full duplex. Yeah, you know, there's there's three options. You can have it old school walkie-talkie. You can have it where you have, you still have to push and hold the button to talk, but you can hear all the time. That one's my personal favorite because I don't like it to just hear me right when I answer the call. I like to be able to, uh, what's it called? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, when you're checking the call, screen the call first. You know, I want to see who's there. Um, and then you could just have basically one. The, the, the third option is right when you answer the call, it's full two-way speech. They can hear everything. You can hear everything. Uh, so that was my popular demand that was also added. Um, and of course, the two relays that you can hold open and everything like that. Uh, this is what the app looks like in the settings. Um, I'll go over the settings a little bit uh, for everybody because a lot of times nobody knows what these icons are. This button obviously is your back button. This button is not a button. This is just letting you know you're in settings. Um, okay, so right here, this is your edit. You know, it's a little notepad with a pen. So you want to edit existing users, uh, things like that, or, or excuse me, you want to edit your, um, Let's say you got a different bell ID or you had a warranty part and you had to change something out and the bell ID changed, you can come in here and just edit that instead of going through the full setup. You can edit the name, you know, the, the older unit. Once you called it Intercom 1, it was Intercom 1 forever. Now you can edit and call it, you know, like, oh, I called it Intercom 1, but now I want to call it front gate, back gate. Uh, you're able to go into the edit. Uh, here is where you're able to control any sound options. Um, Question mark is just to go over um, any part of the apps, anything you have a question with. And plus, this guy right here is what you need. You push plus, this is when you're adding a new intercom, any new intercom that you're trying to add. Uh, the double gear, this is how you would go inside to either reset the unit, like you want to manually reset the power. Uh, excuse me, no, that's down here. This guy right here is where you want to set the firmware. Sorry. So a lot of times, firmware changes. Every, your phone gets it your computer gets it, there's always firmware changes. And what we've done now is we incorporate the firmware change into the application, right? Now it's very important that you guys are on the same network as the unit when you're trying to do this test or when you're trying to do the firmware update. Uh, but we've made it a lot easier now. So let's say, you know, I, I recommend every few months or so uh, to check this button and then you'll notice there's a check firmware on the bottom. You click it and it will tell you if you have the latest firmware or not. Uh, this guy right here is how you add other users. Uh, you know, you have your, your, there's only one admin and anybody else that wants to jump on, you got to add them through here on the admin phone. Uh, this is your relay settings. Uh, you know, if you want to change it from normally open to normally close, let's say you're using a mag lock uh, on a pedestrian gate, you know, you don't want that, that relay to act like normally open, you want it to act like normally closed. Uh, this guy right here, I cannot stress this button enough. Like this is almost as important as grounding. This button right here is where you set your clock. You set your time of where you live uh, and where you're at. Um, very important because the way notifications work, the way Google notifications work, and the way iPhone notifications work, is when it sends it to you, it needs to be on the same time. It does like a time check. And if it's not correct, a lot of times you are not going to get the notification. So very, very important uh, to, get, to get your time set up correctly. And you also notice when you push this button, it'll take you to set your time and daylight savings. And at the bottom, there'll be a spot that says NTP service. Um, to be honest, there's not a specific one you should be on. I always change it just because. Whatever one it's on, I change it to the most bottom or the second most bottom just to make it uh, have to refresh itself, you know, to make it have to reset and connect. So whenever you finish your installation, this is the next thing you do. You go right here, make sure your time's correct, and change your NTP service. That is life. Please do that. Um, of course, if you're not going to go the LAN cable route and you want to go the Wi-Fi route, uh, this is the button you would push. Uh, when you push this button, it's going to show you all the Wi-Fi networks in the area and the signal strengths. Very important if you're going to connect to Wi-Fi to check this button. When you, do, you have to go here anyways to do the install, but when you go here, you have to be over 25, 30%. If you're under 25 or 30%, you're not going to have reliability. You're going to have reliability issues. So very important when you're checking this spot to connect to your home Wi-Fi, it is over 25 to 30 percent. This button right here is just to let you know, um, you know how long you can view for. Because if you notice, there's like a timer here that it starts counting down when you're viewing the photo. 
or you're viewing the, the stream, you can change it. I think the max is like 300 seconds. So when you open it up, it'll stay on for 300 seconds. Uh, this is same thing, the, the, the talk time or the call time. This guy's your call time and this is the talk time. Um, and then of course power. And then this was that duplex speaker we were talking about, changing between the three different settings, you know, whether it's talk like a walkie-talkie or, you know, listen all the time and push the button like a walkie-talkie or just straight two-way talk. Okay, here's another little quick guide, the same thing like the Cellbox Prime. You guys can scan the top corner there with your QR scanner on your handy-dandy phone. And um, basically it'll, it'll you know, give you the, a quick, uh, another quick guide that we have. And then of course, I'm gonna talk again about the site survey because your site survey is your friend. Your site survey is letting you know if you should recommend any of these products to your customer. Um, so basically, you know, you go out to the gate, you, you, when you go to the customer's home, you're not standing inside his home to see if he has good Wi-Fi. You're going to go to the gate and check his Wi-Fi to see what it sounds. And also when you're doing the install, remember you're checking that little Wi-Fi button and you're checking how strong the signal is. But yeah, very important to actually physically walk out to where your install is going to be, where you're going to install that antenna and put your phone exactly where you think that antenna is going to be and check your Wi-Fi signal. Um, and once you have the Wi-Fi signal, let's say it's decent where you're at, the next thing you're gonna do is open that beautiful open signal app I was talking about uh, to run a speed test. Why do I recommend the open signal app over you know, Okla or, or the speedtest.net? Because uh, basically speedtest.net and places like that are just giving you like what your max speed could possibly be when you're doing your speed test. But it's not actually showing you what your speed is available at that time. I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, what you, you best way I can I can explain it is you know do that at your house run a speed test with Ocala and then run a speed test with Open Signal and you'll notice Open Signal is going to show you what your what that device is actually using at that time uh, so very important to to do that and also check that you have more than one meg upload speed uh, download speed is important but we're more worried about upload speed we're worried that the, the intercom is able to send you the information fast enough so it doesn't look choppy. Um, we are the security on your Wi-Fi needs to be WPA or WPA2. Um, uh, any other type of encryption won't work. It won't see the password. It'll just restart and keeps, you know, say offline. It'll never connect. Uh, also very important, it's still only 2.4G, no 5G connection. So you have to have 2.4G in an area if you plan on doing a Wi-Fi connection. If you're doing LAN cable, nothing to worry about. Uh, and of course, um, there's two parts I want to talk about with this. It's not just make sure because a lot of places have, you know, one internet and then they have boosters all around the house that all have the same Wi-Fi. And a lot of times that messes up our intercom because it switches between one of the networks that has 8% and then it switches back to one that has 90% and then it switches one that has 20% and then it makes your unit bounce around. Uh, so that is very important to uh, make sure you're connected to an SSID that is singular and only that name. You don't want to have sharing name, Wi-Fi names, because that will mess you up. And you know, like for instance, they have, I know AT&T does that. They have a you know, different network um, on the router that they provide you. They have like two or three different networks on that router and they all have the same name. And that is no go. You want to separate each network so your Wi-Fi connects to one only. Another thing that I really extremely, extremely recommend is don't just take the customer's word on what the password is. As soon as they give you the Wi-Fi name and as soon as they give you the password, you're gonna take your phone, you're gonna to try to connect. You're gonna put in the, you know, you're gonna find the username or the SSID, excuse me, and then you're gonna put the password in and see if you connect. Because the Wi-Fi unit will not tell you if it, the password's incorrect. It'll just say installation complete. It'll restart itself. Once it restarts itself, it'll never come online and just say offline. And then you're like, oh, this isn't working. So always check your password that your phone can actually connect and then go ahead with your installation because I, you don't know how many people called me with the wrong Wi-Fi password and we did like an hour, an hour of troubleshooting for no reason because they assured me they had the right password. Uh, again, download the Open Signal app. This is your friend and it gives you true and reliable results, uh, not only for internet, but also for your you know, cell towers or cell strength needs. Uh, again, this is also part of the quick guide, uh, you know, showing you more or less your installations. Uh, you do not want to mount your antenna low. You want to mount your antenna high. Um, again, you know, you're, you're, if you have, let's say you have a nice cement brick, you know, wall, 
on the other side of your intercom, you're not going to mount the antenna over here. You're going to run the cable across that wall and then mount your antenna so the unit's able to get its Wi-Fi. Uh, same thing here, if you notice, we're repeating the same steps again, repeating the same thing in the cell box prime. Uh, very important to go 16, 14 gauge, no more than 30 feet. Um, ground it, ground it, ground it, ground it. Just ground it. Very important. <laughs> Uh, again, these states will void your warranty, um, and it's, it's just, yeah, there's a lot of places have electricity. That's why we added the surge board. Uh, the surge board, this is where you're going to connect your ground. This is very important right here. Um, and of course, the surge board has recently changed, and I just wanted to point that out. We, if you have an old school surge, you have two less openings, right? If you have the old surge board, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six connections, not eight. Right? So if you have the old six, your power goes down here on the bottom. If you have the new, uh, excuse me, if you have the new eight, your power goes one step up. Uh, and let me go over these settings here real quick, because a lot of people kind of get confused. They think, oh, I should just look at my solar panel. Uh, maybe I could explain that a little better. This is, they mean this coming from your solar panel. You know what I mean? So you're not necessarily from your solar panel, excuse me, from your solar system. Uh, so if you have like a set of two, a set of two batteries, right? You have one 12 volt battery, you have two 12 volt batteries running in series. From the batteries direct, you are going to connect right here. So you're not connecting a solar panel direct here. You're hooking your solar system from your batteries to this spot right here. If you're using a power supply, you're connecting right here. And of course, on the cell box prime only, I know I'm saying it in the Wi-Fi presentation, but on the cell box prime only, you can connect the a battery for battery backup you can get a nice big juicy battery and hook a 12 volt battery up and it will run your cell box prime for a very long time uh, if you lose power uh, unfortunately 12 volts is not necessarily enough for the wi-fi unit so if you are planning on doing solar for the wi-fi unit 24 volts is your friend all right so 24 volt solar if doing wi-fi and again for cell box if you want battery backup you can use the 12 volt battery uh, hookup uh, this is more or less going, this is a quick setup that everybody can scan. Uh, you want to download the full manual, you come right over here. Uh, you just want to download, uh, you know, specifically just a quick guide. You come right over here. We have for Android and uh, iPhone. Uh, first thing you're going to do, one difference from old to new. Back then you would push the button until you heard the noise. Now with the Wi-Fi 2, you have to push the button for five seconds and let go. And then you'll hear the tone. So back then you used to hear it, now you don't. So don't, don't keep holding saying what's wrong. When you push the button for about five seconds, let go, you'll hear the tone. Uh, at that moment, you will go to your phone's settings, not the app settings. You're going to go to your phone settings and open up your Wi-Fi. When you open up your Wi-Fi, you're going to look for something that looks similar to this. Once you find this, you will then go over, um, you'll, you'll you know, select the bell ID, and the password is always going to be uh, one through nine. Uh, there is also a video uh, for this that we have online that has me. It's about 20 minutes, you know, set, I think it's broken up into two parts that I go very in depth on the installation. So I don't want to beat that over the head now. Uh, but for the most part, if you have the video, go to BFT Americas on YouTube. That is our YouTube channel. We got a lot of good videos there uh, that could help you guys out. But more or less, this is, this is your, your walkthrough. This is your quick setup uh, to get what you got done. Um, again, the surge board, uh, you know, I just went over that. I, you know, I don't want to kill it, but I'm just, it's a very good thing. Use it, ground it. Uh, more, this is the inside. We mounted on the same place. You have your, um, excuse me, you have your keypad. You have your button. This is your camera. And then this is the, this, this is two parts. This is your Wi-Fi motherboard and a roller. This is two parts. Whenever you get parts, there's two here, not one. Um, you know, not much more to go over. I don't need to go over basic things. Um, this is the last part I really wanted to touch that I spoke on that you want to create your Wi-Fi unit into a cellular video unit. Uh, you can buy the kit. Roy can provide that for you guys later through Encon. And it's, uh, basically we provide the SIM, we provide the unit. You just plug the SIM in here. You put power to it. You run a LAN cable from here over to your unit. And then you would follow the manual as a LAN cable, uh, installation and then that should take you to where you need um the data line is only ten dollars a month and it's real you know it's a reoccurring uh, monthly charge um and honestly you don't use that much data at all on this thing this wi-fi unit you can make like 60 calls 70 calls that are pretty lengthy before you use a gig um 
you know, it's great for small businesses or sites where, you know, you just need people to come in, you know, home, residential. Um, I mean, there's not too much more I can add about this. We can get you a cut sheet if you need. Uh, this does work with AT&T and T-Mobile. Um, so you, you can use different networks with this, but again, we recommend our Sims because we set them up right for you. Um, don't think there's too much more. You know, I thank you guys for your time. You know, any questions, we're more than happy to answer. Okay, then. Uh, well, if there's no questions for anybody, then I guess we'll go ahead and end that here. Um, once again, thank you, Roy. Thank you, Pablo. Um, if anybody who's watching this ends up having any questions, feel free to call or email N County Electronics. We'll try our best to answer your questions. And of course, if we don't know the answer, uh, we'll go ahead and get BFT on the line and get the answers for you. Once again, yes. thank you everyone for joining and uh, talk to you next time. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.